Welcome to Syntax, a Generative Introduction, 4th Edition. My name is Andrew Carney. I'm a professor of linguistics at the University of Arizona. I'm the author of your textbook, and I'll be leading you through this series of video tutorials. So in this unit, we've been talking about the empty category pro. Empty meaning it has no phonological content, or it's null. We spent a lot of time talking about where uh, pro appears. It appears in embedded clauses when there's no case assigner, and there's no option to move an element uh, into a case position. Uh, pro acts uh, sort of like a pronoun, pronoun in that it gets its reference um, often from something else in the sentence. But there are other empty categories, and it's worth talking about them very quickly. So first of all, um, as I've mentioned before, syntacticians are really terrible at names. Um, we have two pros. We have pro written in all capital letters and pro written in lowercase letters. Pro with capital letters is often called big pro. And pro in lowercase letters is often called little pro or baby pro. Um, these two empty categories are quite different from one another. So we've been talking mainly about big pro. But let's uh, also introduce the idea um, behind little pro. So big pro is a caseless form that's found in infinitivals in English. Little pro or baby pro is uh, a special kind of null subject found in cased positions. So not caseless, but case positions in languages like Spanish, Italian, uh, Chinese, Japanese, um, where you simply don't say the subject. So if you want to say speak in Italian, you say parlo. If you want to say you speak, you say parli. Um, and there's a null implied subject in those sentences. Um, Baby Pro is often licensed by rich agreement morphology in the languages that have it. So in Spanish and Italian, you have uh, suffixes that tell you what the person of the subject, person, gender, number of the subject is. So you can simply omit the, um, the, the overt pronoun. Now we have to have Pro for our theory because we have to have something occupying the specifier of the TP in order to not violate the extended projection principle. So uh, baby pro is a theoretical tool to um, capture that distribution. Um, we think that there's maybe uh, what we call a null subject parameter, which is some languages allow null subject pronouns, uh, others don't. So uh, English and French don't allow null subject pronouns. Uh, Spanish, Italian, Irish, they do. Um, it is worth noting that um, this correlation with rich agreement morphology holds primarily in European languages. Um, in languages of Asia, um, they also have baby pro, but they don't have the rich morphology that goes along with it. Instead, pro seems to be licensed in those languages by context. If there's sufficient context um, that you can deduce who the subject is, you can simply leave off the subject pronoun and use a pro instead. So that's big pro and little pro, or baby pro. We also have two other situations where we have null items in subject position. The first case um, is the situation where you have a trace after you've moved the DP. Either you've moved the DP to get case, or you move the DP for WH movement, at that point there's still a trace in the specifier of the TP position. So, uh, and that trace satisfies the EPP as well. Another, um, another example is the subject of imperatives. Um, if, you have a, if you say something like, leave now, there's no subject, but there is an implied subject. There's an implied second person subject. Um, and uh, we also propose a null subject uh, category to appear in the specifier of TP in these forms as well. Um, we often abbreviate it as imp for imperative. Um, imperatives are commands. Um, so uh, leave now is really imp leave now, but this is null. And this uh, particular form is inherently second person 
It can be plural or singular. Um, so that is yet another null subject we have. And uh, just as we need big pro and little pro for the EPP, we need these traces and imp uh, to deal with the EPP as well.